Resurrecting, okay. All right, what's the question? I mean, I could get, I could guess some questions based on the idea of resurrecting a dead body, but what's your question? <laughs> well, it's not very, it's not, there's, there's no science that I know of. There's no scientific evidence of somebody coming back to life after three days. But there is scientific evidence of somebody coming back to life within a certain amount of seconds. And depending on how many seconds could lead to a certain level of brain damage or mental retardation because of the lack of oxygen that went throughout your went th throughout your body, right? So um, Well, if we want to discuss uh, how it could have been done, that's that's something that the Bible discusses. Uh, as for actual physical evidence, uh, there is, I only have anecdotal stories of people being raised to the dead, even now, around the world. Predominantly in the United States, uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't perform miracles. The Holy Spirit right now, God, the Creator, is performing a lot of miracles over in China and India. And there are a lot of stories over there, but I don't live over there. So I can only tell you stories of what I've heard and people being raised from the dead over there right now. Um, so that that's what I would, I would tell you is to go research evidence, actual factual, uh, either uh, witnesses that saw it occur. Um, that's going to be your your best sources to receive uh, information from of people being raised from the dead. Aside from that, it's anecdotal. Anecdotal meaning uh, it's just hearsay. She, uh, you know, he said, she said type stuff, which, you know, you, you take it or leave it. Uh, but in reference towards the Bible, <clears throat> the main thing that occurred was that when Adam and Eve sinned, the power of death, the authority of death, was then transferred to the one, who, the one who caused it, the one who uh, tricked, pers persuaded uh, humans to do it, which was the devil. So then the devil, uh, in that sense, had the keys, the metaphorical keys to, uh, to, to spiritual death, to not, to not being able to become alive again. Uh, later in Scripture, uh, in the book of Revelations, it talks about that the devil will actually give life to an image. Uh, so nowadays, it would seem it would seem to say that there's going to be uh, some kind of artificial intelligence, maybe some kind of android, and the devil is going to uh, somehow cause it to be animated. Uh, that, that would be our current understanding, but the, in Scripture it says he's going to give life to something. So, there in Scripture is this implication that uh, not only does God give life, not only can the devil give life, but it's also that humans give life. Because when a man and a woman come together, they, they become one flesh, and that flesh um, is not only scientifically proof that the skins of both the man and the woman after being together for years, they actually have the same skin, uh, actual physical sin. Their, skin, their skin changes to literally become just like each other, but the production of a child, right? So they become one flesh, uh, metaphorically speaking, in that their two bodies become one body, you know, a separate person, a separate entity and human being, but their two bodies became one flesh. So it's 
So there's, there's all kinds of uh, pictures, analogies, metaphors that you can take from a man and a woman coming together and becoming one. So humans can make life. Not only that, but we know scientifically speaking, uh, at least within the last 30 years on predominant major news, cloning. Cloning is a thing. You know, they've, they've talked about cloning sheep later on. Uh, that was in the 90s. Uh, in the uh, 2000, 2010, they talked about actually cloning parts of human beings and growing it on animals. So if a human being needed it, they could just transfer that over. This is like 10-year-old stuff. Um, they actually even put 12, 13 years ago, we're putting human brain cells inside of pigs. And this is the stuff they talk about. The, the government had has talked in back in 92 Bill, I think the year was 92 92 or 93 Bill Clinton uh, apologized on national television saying that the United States was asking for forgiveness for doing uh, atrocities to humankind because with Canada they were performing uh, mental torture on children to see how the brain will react or not react. Um, if I remember correctly, it's Project Butterfly. And um, so, it, and that has led to them understanding how to manipulate and control and brainwash uh, the human population. The, the, reason I, I, <laughs> the reason I bring that back up, because I, I brought it up before, is that that's also something I, like they talked about it briefly. I remember hearing about it on the news, and then it felt like nobody ever talked about it after that. They admitted to atrocities that are just unheard of, unspeakable. And uh, so, if that's the stuff that they're willing to admit to, again, what are the things that they're not willing to admit to? Uh, so, it would it, it, from. From the best of my understanding, cloning has also been going on since back with Hitler and Nazis. And so we're talking, you know, 80 years of, of this been going on. But they, they started talking about it in the 90s with animals. Then they started talking about with human parts, 2000, 2010, last 10 years. I haven't really um, come across any information. I haven't really looked for it, but I haven't really come across any information of what they do uh, in modern day. So... But I bring all that up just to say that humans can create life too. We can create life. So this idea of somebody dying and then resurrecting, back in the 90s, they said that they found the blood of a mosquito uh, from, I think it was in, it was either Russia or Canada, where they were finding a whole bunch of mammoths, this extinct animal, uh, dinosaur, right? There, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of these animals in Canada and, and in Russia. Well, anyways, uh, they had found a mosquito there, too, that was frozen, and it was in really good shape. Well, they got the blood of the mosquito, and they brought the mosquito back to life. So they resurrected the mosquito. So this, you know, obviously that's not a human being. That's a mosquito. Uh, if they can clone different parts of a human, that's what they've admitted back in, like, 2008, 2009. If they can grow the parts of a human on an animal, and in a... Uh, Oh, yeah, now I'm starting to remember in uh, 2008, 2009, somewhere around there, they were also growing um, animals in in uh, artificial wombs. And they talked about how they can actually uh, get a baby of uh, the mother's womb. Let's say the mother's dying or, or somehow the, the interaction between the mother and the baby is bad. They can remove the baby and put the baby in an artificial womb and the baby can continue to grow. In other words, what, what they were saying without saying it is that they can clone humans. They never said that. Again, I, 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 from the scientific papers and research that I, I saw, that was never actually worded out loud. But uh, for me, it seems clear that they've been cloning since um, back in the Nazis. Another thing to consider is that half of the, half of the Nazis uh, that were, being, were supposed to be tried for... Uh, what is it? What what was the phrase? Uh, tortures to humankind. What uh, atrocities to human? Something like that. Well, anyway, so who were to be tried for these for being war criminals? Well, half of them uh, they went to Russia, and the other half they went to America. Uh, and so, th 
what is that to imply? It's, it's to imply that the studies that and research that was going on in Nazi Germany continued on in Russia and the United States. So, um, to me, that's clear. To me, it's clear. To me, it's 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 evidence that God created life. Um, the devil, angels, they they can also animate life. They can make life. And, and humans, we we can make life. Not only do we make life through procreation, through our human anatomy, uh, and create another being, but um, we can do it scientifically too. So for, for me, it, it's not a big deal to say somebody was resurrected. Uh, also in scripture, again, we're going back to scripture. It says that the uh, the one who is to be uh, the Antichrist, you ever heard about the Antichrist, this man of lawlessness, this guy who's about to come on the scene, you know, I don't know, if, have, you, have you heard of the Antichrist? Well, so the, this Antichrist is supposed to be, uh, according to scripture, this guy is supposed to be someone who was from before. So they're, they're going to bring him back to life. And so I, I would I would assume that the same process would, would happen, that they would get the blood of, of a prior uh, world leader and then resurrect him. And re in reference towards Jesus specifically himself, uh, it says that he raised himself from the dead. Um, part, part of the, when you die, part of the thing that goes on is you go into a temporary uh, stasis. Well, there's a difference, according to scripture, there's a difference between um, when you get removed from your body, your spirit goes to sleep. Okay, you're going to need to say something, because I feel like I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> You might be listening, but if you could please type, because I feel like I'm talking to myself. If you... oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, no, no, that happens to a lot of people, that happens to a lot of people. I, I'm a good talker. <laughs> I'm a good talker, but I, I, I as much as I, I love the sound of my own voice, I <laughs> I, I, ha I already talked to my I already have these thoughts to myself so I don't <laughs> okay anyways uh, <laughs> where was I at oh in reference to specifically Jesus yeah when you when according to scripture when your spirit leaves your body your spirit falls asleep your spirit needs to be in a physical body oh, yeah there's a lot there's a lot to learn about it and government like paperwork and um, you can look at FBI CIA websites you can look up you know documentation it's it's um, it's not too hard to find if you follow a lot of people who are, are paranoid you know uh, conspiracy theory type to me this is human nature like conspiracy theory is is like human nature like you, if you were rich and powerful wouldn't you want to protect your riches and your power? Of course you would, right? So then what would you do? Is You would put traps for people to not be able to become as rich as you or as powerful as you. You, you would establish friendships with people that will protect your interests. You know, like, so, so to me, it's not a conspiracy theory. To me, it's human nature. Um, so you can, you can actually find this information and the evidence uh, in, in government documentation. And so anyway, so if you follow these people who are considered conspiracy theorists, uh, or they believe all these crazy stuff, and I do, I follow, I follow a lot of these guys, because like you, I like learning too, um, they actually do a lot of the research for you, and then so they, they'll tell you, you know, like, go to this website, or look at this document, and then you can look for that document, and you can go to that website, and so you don't, you don't have to spend so much energy and time trying to find all these things, because it's extremely difficult, I mean, uh, like, it's, it's not difficult to find those particular things, it might be, but it would be extremely difficult to find all of this information without getting help, right? And so uh, I'm willing to listen to people who might actually be crazy, and who, who will lead me in a direction that might that might uh, prove to me with actual proof that what uh, that something they said might be right, even though they might actually be crazy and off the rocker. And I'm like, yeah, that dude's crazy. But he said this one thing that led me towards this one website where I looked at this document and then it proved to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can learn. You can learn. You can learn from anybody. 
So anyways, so when your when your spirit gets removed from your body, you fall asleep, right? You're you're what what we need to re, what we need to understand is we are spirits. We are not physical bodies. Science talks about that it, 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 that you can use, you can also break down uh, who we are in the zeros and ones. They can actually get data of our brain and map it out, right? And so, what? Uh, and this is this again. That's this is like ten-year-old information. I, I haven't really done a lot of research on current-day understanding of what it is to be intelligent or consciousness or brain, because um, I've just been thinking about other stuff. But they, they they can map your brain, and in essence, they can create your personality. Or in essence, they can grab your your conscious, your spirit, your soul, and then put you into another to another thing. One of the things that the, the main guy, I forget his name, but the main guy he was trying to do was actually he was trying to resurrect his father. And he was so if in his mind, if he could get blood or uh, something that had the, the DNA RNA of his father, and then put it and then uh, cause it to grow then it would recreate the person who is his father and then he could clone his actual dad and he could get his dad back. On top of that, if he could do that, then he could do it for himself and then he could live forever. That was uh, that was his goal. He, he, if you Google, um, oh gosh, what is the word? He said there was one word, it was going to be the great... I mean, it might come back to me later. If it comes to me later, I'll let you know. Um, so anyways, we are spirits. We're not physical bodies. This is my physical body. And if someone says, hey, I see you, I know they're talking about this physical body. And I won't deny the fact that if you look at this physical body and you say, hey, I'm looking at you, that you're looking at me. To me, I am the physical body and I am the spirit. But if you remove my spirit from this physical body, the body's going to die. And my spirit's going to go to sleep. But we're talking about, like, but, but what are the things that uh, a lot of people who don't grasp they really don't I know the creator okay one of the things about having his spirit inside you is that he helps you to look at things from different perspectives <laughs> and and one of the main things that people do not grasp who say that they're Christians who say that they read the Bible who say that they know the creator is you're dealing with a being who's outside of space and time and so this being is going to help you to see uh, that there. He's going to help you to see that what you look at, what, what, what we're experiencing. Uh, current day string theory says we live in a simulation. According to scripture, the things that you see are going to pass away. The things that you can't see will remain forever. String theory is, is kind of touching on that because what they found is that there's limits. There's limits to the to the boundaries of this experience that that, that we're in. Depending on whether you call, you're talking about Euclidean uh, geometry or normal geometry, you're talking about three or four dimensions. If, you, if you're talking about four dimensions, Euclidean, you're including time. So according to modern day uh, science, and, and obviously a lot of this is arguable, actually. Science, um, in general, does not agree with a lot of things. So, uh, And what I'm talking about is, is we're talking about extra physics. We're talking about metaphysics, microphysics. We're talking about, you know, the, the, the greater parts of the universe and things. And, and so popular science doesn't agree with what I say. But if you go into string theory, which is not popular science, and then you go into the popular area of string theory, you get into different areas. So anyways, the reason why they say it's a simulation, because they, there's only so small you can go. When they, when they, would, when they would put things under uh, computer-type telescopic... Uh, viewing they they you know you you break down you get into cells so forth and so on and they could break down break down break down then all of a sudden it disappeared and what they caught they called that non-location so they got to the point where they were like okay there's something weird going on because things don't no longer get smaller they now disappear then then what ended what ended up them figuring out or theorizing is that uh, what they could do is they could take a picture of it and, the, and they, they found that they could take a picture of stuff that was there but they couldn't see it. Then they came to the, the understanding that 
each of those things that they could take a picture of were actually interconnected. And so, um, for a lack of better words, these non-locutive um, cells, let's call them, super duper small cells, it's like 10 to the negative 64 or something like that. I don't know. You can look the number up. They would be connected to cells like, say, let's say there's a cell in my body and it's connected to a cell in Japan, to a cloud that's, that's flying over Japan. Every cell around the whole world is all connected. So then what they started to realize is they were looking at a wall. Things weren't disappearing. They thought it was disappearing because they were looking for something extremely small. But it, as things got smaller, smaller, and smaller, actually what ended up happening is it gets to a point and there's a wall. So there's a barrier. In other words, they found <laughs> when it comes to small, when you when you talk about trying to get smaller and smaller, they found the barrier to, to what we experience. And we're only talking about four dimensions, right? Space, so hit, length, width, height, and uh, time. Because as when you have a three-dimensional object, uh, in, in order to talk about you experience something, is you, you talk about, well, I saw it, and then now it's here. So you're talking about time. So there's a wall. When it came to how big things could get, they, they found they found a, a, a limit to, I'm sorry, not, not big, but so they went small. They were trying to go in, so they tried to go out. When they went out, they found that there's a certain point where things are so cold, things don't move. So then star, the distant stars are literally not, fig, well, they're not figments of our imagination. What they are is they are sim simulated, uh, simulated lights. The edge of the universe Oh, no, no, you made me feel better when you typed earlier, so don't, <laughs> don't, don't feel too, uh, although it would make me feel better if every now and then you typed something, just so I know I'm not talking to myself, but, but because you responded earlier, now I'm, I have faith that I'm, I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> well, anyways, when they talked about going out, so that was going in, right, so when they talk about going out, you know, things get, they get so cold, they don't move, and so you're talking about, like, laws of, uh, conservation, uh, der different thermodynamic laws. There, there's um, things are not getting hotter; they're getting colder. So then, there's a certain limit. Things are getting colder. So then, the edge of the universe, or the, the edge of the perceived universe, literally is like a uh, a projection or a screen or a TV. And so, those distant stars are not really there. It's just something that we see. Okay, so that's that's the, uh, the either the three dimensions if we're just talking about length, height, and width, or four dimensions if we're including time. But uh, what uh, science was saying back ten years, eleven years ago, so I'm sure I'm sure they they've probably gotten a little bit farther now, is they, they concluded that that yeah, the, so the, these four dimensions, this length, width, height, and time, we can we can get it, we understand it, we can grasp it. But then they started talking about what, but there's other dimensions, right? So gravity is a dimension. Electromagnet, negative, electromagnetivity is a dimension. There's 10 dimensions that right now, or at least 10 years ago, science was saying we can understand, we can, we can grasp and understand these four dimensions. We can, we, we can kind of, you know, like we can explain to an extent, we can put rules, you know, certain physical rules that, that kind of apply, you know, here and there for the most part within those. But then when we start going into like gravity and electromagnetivity and and, and, and the rest up to 10 more, uh, six more up to 10 dimensions, uh, we start, it's, it stuff starts getting really hazy. It starts acting really weird. We don't quite get it, but what we can kind of sense that those are there. So that's 10. There's actually 10 dimensions according to to science, uh, and this is ten-year-old information. <laughs> That's a lot of tens. Uh, so, so maybe I know at that point they were they were talking about there was an eleventh one. Now, back Einstein uh, was talking about there's up to 27, 27, 29, I don't, I don't remember the number. For me personally, being somebody who reads scripture, it seems evident to me that there's a, a, an unlimited amount of dimensions that we are surrounded with right now, because this 
the experience that the Creator put us in, that we're in right now, is an expression of Himself, and He is limitless. So then there would be an unlimited amount of dimensions that we can experience that is Him. And so, in, within this environment that we're in right now, uh, originally when we were created, we were created being able to perceive the whole thing. But when we sinned, it dumbed us down. It dumbed us down to this to this level where we only got those three or four, depending on how what, what wording you want to use. Uh, and then there's ten that we can, I mean, or six other ones that we can kind of, you know, sense that they're there. Uh, but then there's a whole bunch more. There was, uh, so I said all that, and that's according to science. Check this out. Back in the 10th, the 12th century, there's this great uh, rabbinic uh, Jewish uh, you know, thinker. His name was Maimonides, and he studied the Hebrew of the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis, and he came to the same conclusion in the 12th century. E equals mc squared. He came that there's that there's four uh, dimensions that we can understand, but there's six other ones that we just that we can kind of grasp, you know. He came to the same conclusion by studying the, the Hebrew in the first chapter of the Bible that scientists have, in the last hundred years, have kind of not even quite agreed that it might be true, but are coming to the conclusion that it seems it's headed in that direction. <laughs> so this this Bible that we have is uh, it is an it is an extremely interesting uh, piece of information. In a lot of ways, uh, it's it's more of a hologram that's being projected into our environment. The Bible is extremely peculiar. Uh, there there is there's there's so many ways to delve into and try to figure out what's in there, and uh, seemingly it is unlimited. Yeah, I, I feel like that's the end of the... I feel like I've answered your question. But maybe you might have other questions. Yeah. Yeah. Life will continue... Life is going to continue on forever. It's just a matter of how is... How is the Creator going to interact with the creation and and he likes diversity he likes change he doesn't change personally his personality his habits and characteristics are always the same but he he likes variety spice of life you know 